Hello and welcome to the Thursday, September 1st, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I wrote a brief diary earlier today about a little bit a newer DNS uh, feature, QName minimization. Typically, when one thinks about recursive DNS servers, and that's probably what I sort of learned in school, they will first send a query for the host name they're trying to resolve to the root or top-level domain servers. But, well, these servers do not really need the full host name. In 2016, RFC 7816 was introduced, and last year we got an update for it, RFC 9156. The process described by these RFCs is called DNS query name or short queue name minimizations. DNS servers will no longer send the entire host name to the higher up name servers. Instead, they're sending the domain part only and are replacing the host name with an underscore. Underscores, of course, have often been sort of used as a placeholder more or less uh, because they're not actually valid in host names. This obscures the full name from uh, these root and top level DNS servers. In the past, we have had cases where ISPs and such operating uh, these name servers did collect data in front of in particular some of the root name servers, also security companies and such. I've seen a bind use this for a bit now. It also helps with some caching efficiency. Other DNS servers are possibly implementing it too. So if you see these queries, they're perfectly normal. Let me know what name servers you do see implementing this. And Apple today released iOS 12.5.6. iOS 12 is the latest version of uh, iOS supported by iPhones 6 and older, as well as iPads of the same generation. This update fixes the already exploited WebKit vulnerability, CVE 2022-32894. Current iOS and macOS versions receive the patch up out two weeks ago. So this is just backporting this security fix to these older versions of iOS. And Checkpoint is reporting about yet another lure used to get people to install crypto miners. If you search for Google Translate Desktop Download, ironically on Google, you'll see the second link leading you to a page that offers various programs that uh, will implement functionality that is usually only available uh, online, for example, Google Translate. But they offer a desktop version of uh, these tools. It's, well, you know, just a wrapper around the APIs, uh, basically. But, uh, yeah, it can be useful to some people. What's bad about this particular site is that the month after you installed particular software, additional malware is installed on your system. Waiting a month probably reduces some of the chances of getting uh, discovered, and currently they appear to be installing uh, crypto coin miners. And yes, I tried to search uh, before starting recording and it still perfectly worked. Of course, I'm not sure whether or not you're still downloading malware. Well, I don't have a month to wait. And in updates today, we have a patch for Apache Geode. It fixes a deserialization flaw that can lead to code execution if you're using JXM over RMI, but only on Java 8. Java 8, it's getting up there in H, but still widely used, so double check if you're using Apache Geode. And Foxit released a new version of its PDF reader. The current version, the older version, uh, came with an out-of-date JavaScript engine, which had a number of known vulnerabilities. Then I have a correction about a story I covered yesterday. Thanks to a listener for pointing out that the Chromium bug only allows write access to your clipboard, not read access. Also, there was an update for Google Chrome earlier today. It does address some security issues, but as far as I can tell, this is still a problem. Now, abusing a write access to the clipboard is a little more difficult than abusing read access. I could see 
attackers just dumping, for example, some uh, crypto coin address on there, hoping that you'll copy paste it in some form field. Of course, the chance of success there are pretty low or just the uh, denial of service attacks where they basically delete your clipboard or overwrite maybe passwords or so that in, in there so you keep getting locked out of sites because you keep using the wrong password. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.